Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to take a look at the HUD head up display, this guy here in the F15E. We're going to look at master modes, assigning command, controls, associated panel and base symbology. First, master modes, of which we have four, air to air, air to ground, nav and instrument. If you follow my cursor we have air to air currently default, air to ground, nav and instrument. We can also press castle switch forward to cycle between air to air and air to ground. Press once, press twice. In certain situations you may get a lot of blinding from the sun. You can see a tiny bit of reflection here. So left shift and N will bring our pilot visor down which may help with that. Next, if we want to manipulate the HUD in any way we need to assign command or soy sensor of interest to it. To do that, it's castle switch press followed by castle switch forward. So press forward. We can now see in air to ground we have in command here. Next, we can use various HOTAS controls to do different things with the HUD. First, assuming that we have the HUD in command and we do here, auto acquisition switch aft will bring up our auto or CDIP symbology. In this case, the only weapon I have equipped is the gun. So it's brought up the gun. We know that because we can see it's got the amount of rounds of the gun here and the CDIP reticle here. And just to prove that in fact, uh, master arm on, trigger. Yep, we definitely have the gun. Also, if we were in auto air to ground mode we could press nose gear steering slash weapons button to cage the auto reticle to the velocity vector this guy here we don't have the necessary weapons for that so i can't show it off also if we were in air to ground mode we could use the target designator control, so the up, down, left, right, and press to designate a ground target from the HUD. This function is not available in early access, will be added later. As will left multifunction switch, which will temporarily cage the velocity vector here while in nav or instrument mode. Next is the associated control panel. If you follow my cursor down here, we can change the symbology brightness here and turn the entire HUD off with this rheostat. We have, or we will have, the ability to reject certain associated symbology with this switch here. Again, not in early access. Regards brightness, we can tailor it for day or night or auto will detect the ambient light and choose the necessary setting. And finally, any raster image to be shown overlaid on the HUD, like Navflur, we will be able to control the brightness of it and the contrast of it there, which just leaves the base symbology. So if I zoom in on the HUD, this is air to ground mode. Starting at the top, we have a magnetic heading tape here in degrees times 10 shown where the pointer is here we are heading approx 263 degrees magnetic also this guy here is our command heading it shows the magnetic heading 274 to our currently selected steer point this guy here is weapons it's our c dip uh, reticle covered in the air to ground video this cross here is our gun cross where the gun rounds will be fired at this pipa here shows where the rounds will hit this guy here is the pitch ladder and we'll come back to that uh, in a different mode for a better explanation this box here is our current barometric altitude in feet if below 1500 feet we also get our radar altitude in hundreds of feet shown in this bar here bottom right we have our nav block currently selected steer point shown as one or one a current distance to that steer point 0 0.3 nautical miles because we pressed auto acquisition aft we selected our gun and we can see the gun is selected out of interest, SysG shows the current highest priority sensor used to calculate the gun CDIP symbology. 249 
at 17 nautical miles. That is the distance and bearing from Mission Bullseye to us. Velocity vector shows where our aircraft is going to, not the same as where our aircraft is pointing. In command, we've talked about, because we've got the gun selected, our current amount of rounds in the gun, our current speed in Mach, our current G-loading, and our current maximum G-loading, 9G. Very important, we have our angle of attack here, not in degrees. It's in units, and those units do not equate to degrees. Finally, in this mode, we have our speed. It's not indicated airspeed, it's calibrated airspeed in knots. It's similar to indicated airspeed. Next, let's go to air-to-air. -air. Different master modes will have slight changes. Here we now have our current missile selected because we've gone to air-to-air -air mode and we don't have any missiles, so it's meaningless. Added here, below the gun cross, is our waterline. The waterline is to be used in conjunction with our pitch ladder here to tell the attitude of our aircraft. So I'm pointing down at the moment just to uh, make everything easier to see. Negative 25, negative 30 degrees and so on, showing our current attitude of the aircraft is about negative 28 degrees. This circle here shows the three-dimensional location of our currently selected steer point. I think that's everything that's different. Let's go to nav. Things added are first a roll indicator along the bottom here shown by this triangle here shows that we're rolling slightly right. 0, 10, 20, 30, 45 and 60 degrees roll. Also, we now have an estimated time of arrival at our currently selected steer point in hours, minutes and seconds. And finally, we have instrument, which just has the roll indicator removed, which I don't understand because in instrument flying, I would have thought a roll indicator is extremely important. One other thing to show if I am pause, whoop, is of course, we have our horizon line shown as part of the pitch ladder which is important obviously in low visibility situations that is the hud in the early access f15e i hope that was useful and goodbye